Hello everyone, this is Cliff. Welcome back to our Let's Play of Dark Souls, the Prepare to Die edition. And I just wanted to do this kind of short uh, intro to this next video. Um, I got a couple of boss souls. Uh, and I just wanted to actually show you the upgraded version of using these boss souls. Uh, to upgrade some weapons. Uh, so first we got uh, the mail bur uh, mail breaker. Uh, this uh, moonlight butterfly. There's two items uh, that you can ascend: uh, a plus ten shield and a plus ten spear or thrusting weapon. So we just chose the mail breaker, and we're going to ascend it to the moonlight butterfly horn. Now the shield is a completely different. It's a shield. Uh, that really kind of got nerfed. It was a fairly powerful att offensive weapon um, before a couple of patches kind of nerfed its power. Uh, so we're going to just use the. Uh, we're just going to send it into a spear, that moonlight horn. And let's see. The core of an iron golem that was Sin's Fortress. Uh, it does two weapons as well. There's an axe if you have a plus 10 axe. And you have this dragon bone fist, and that is for fist weapons. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come up here, and we have this item. And I can't wield it because I don't have the stats to wield it yet. And uh, I don't know if I've showed you this, but if you don't have the stats to wield it, and apparently I do when it's two-handed. Let's just go one-handed. If you actually try to swing it and don't hit the freaking environment, your guy will have a rough time actually pulling it back effectively. You won't be able to attack quite as often or it'll do some weird animation. Uh, so the other item is this right here. And I can't wield it effectively either. Yeah, you end up doing that. And ironically, you cannot two-hand this weapon, so you actually have to have the, the stats to, to wield this, or you're just kind of screwed. Okay, uh, after that short little uh, weapon introduction, uh, let's actually get into the video proper. Um, next up is New Londo Ruins, and we've been here before. Uh, I think in the either the second or the third video, uh, this is uh, the area where we got our... Firekeeper soul and so we're gonna head back down here now there are a few aggravating things about this area um, a majority of the enemies that you face in the very beginning are immune to normal weapons uh, there's only three ways you can actually injure them uh, you have to have your character uh, under the effects of the curse status effect, uh, which halves your halves your hit points. Uh, not exactly a, a great situation to be in. You need to have a cursed weapon, uh, and as far as I know, there are only three, unless the additional content adds some. Um, right now, there's really no possibility of us having any of those. Um, and the third way is to actually use an item called the transient curse and I have bought out uh, there's a the merchant um, near the shortcut to the depths has four transient curses I've bought her out of inventory and I got two from a pot a little bit later on I actually got that in the second video uh, you can find a, a very small amount of them uh, scattered throughout this area I think there's like maybe eight all total um, which should be enough to actually get you through um, at least to the NPC there's another NPC in in this area coming up that will actually sell uh, transient curses and if push comes to shove we may actually buy something from him I don't want to really deal with that guy. Um, okay. Don't let me... 
So, um, what we're going to hope, we've got the uh, Covetous Gold Serpent Ring on right now. We're going to hope that we can get one of the cursed weapons um, from our initial foray into uh, this area. Um, now, there's going to be a fight coming up. That's why I'm kind of holding back here. Um, so, like I say, uh, basically what you have to do is you go through this area and you have to lower the water level. You have to talk to that NPC. He gives you an item that lets you lower the water level. And once you do that, you can kind of skip most of the section with the ghosts, which are the, the problem enemies. Uh, now, there are some very difficult enemies once you lower the water level, but um, at least you can kill them in a straight up fight. Um, so that's the plan for this video is to at least lower the water level. And that will open up a shortcut to, well, I won't say a shortcut. That will open up the, uh, an entrance to the Valley of the Drakes, which is an area we've already been. So the reason I held up here is you will actually run into, um, that very first NPC that tells you about ringing the bells, the one who went slightly insane after uh, the primordial serpent showed up and he's right here not him him and he's not terribly difficult to beat in fact I'm getting tired of doing all this I think he actually tried to parry my attack so Yeah, okay, so maybe four hits and he's dead. So you get a thousand souls and not much else from him. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to prep. We've, we've got our transient curse there. We're going to dump that. And I'm going to dump all of this for right now. And I'm just going to have these two items that way we can switch back and forth a lot faster uh, pretty standard set as far as what pyromancies I'm using and we're gonna give it a go now like I say this area can be very aggravating um, but if you have that covetous gold serpent ring you should be able to get one of these weapons pretty easily I, I actually ended up with three or four weapons um, the first time through here and that and that makes things a lot easier so basically we want to have this transit curse um, as a quick select item for two reasons one it allows us to use it faster that's uh, kind of a no-brainer but once we use it um, we have a very small window I think it's about five minutes real time um, where we're under the temporary curse so you won't be able to use another transient curse this item will actually be grayed out so you can kind of use it as a timer to tell uh, to tell you if you can still attack the ghosts which is a good thing all right so we're going to run through and we're not going to use this like i say it's a timed item so we're not going to use it until we actually see a ghost so right there we're going to do that and it does have that little bit of an animation so just be aware and the good news about this is they don't do a terrible amount of damage um, not that you want to stand and trade with them toe to toe you don't want to do that now be very careful you can actually come back here and we're gonna break this like that because I don't want to do something stupid and roll off and we get two more transit curse at this point we should be good to go until we drop the water level unless I do something incredibly stupid uh, which does happen from time to time so I I'm not gonna I gonna hold my breath let's wait and see if we get all this done okay so you got one come up here and that's that's another aggravating thing about these they generally attack you through walls they attack you through floors uh, sometimes you'll get attacked through ceilings now what you want to be careful of is that right there and you want to back out where they'll actually chase you 
And as I say that, he doesn't. Whoa, that was not spectacular on either of us' part. Um, okay, we're going to come through. We're going to cut this one down, maybe. And this is where it gets crappy. Because they can do a grab attack like that. And that does a fair, decent amount of damage. But the good news is... There, that's what we want. That is one of the cursed weapons. That is actually the better of the two cursed weapons you can get from the ghosts. Okay, so... What will happen eventually is we will actually be able to use this and that is the shortcut for this little level. Okay, let's move on. And whoa, well, we'll take the quick way, I guess. All right, uh, so pretty much anytime you see an item lying out in the open like this, You'll have to be very careful. As you can see, there's a ghost right there. Now that's a very useful item for doing parry reposts. Um, we're not going to equip it right now. I will show you that item and how it works a little bit later on when I'm not under a uh, ticking clock. Okay. So like I say, good news is... These guys are going to go down typically in one hit. That one's a little bit different. The one that screams is a little bit different. Uh, she can actually do a ranged lightning attack. Um, but the good thing is she almost always screams the first time she sees you. And that will allow you to get a couple of hits in before she can really do anything. Okay, now we're going to kick this ladder down right here. And that creates a, I think that's a shortcut. Um, yeah. So obviously you need to watch out for this one right up above us here. You can't come down. See, they can do all sorts of crazy range type attacks. We're not worried about them right now. We're just going to head straight ahead. Got some below us. All right, so we're doing pretty decent right now. I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to leave enemies. They are pretty persistent. They're not terribly damaging right now, but as you've seen, they have that grab attack and that's not healthy for you. That's about the only thing I really worry about at this point. Now, let's see. We should have a couple right there. Now, the good news and the bad news is I think I have actually pulled all of the enemies that would have been in this area. Or I've at least pulled a majority of them. As more enemies come to attack. Oh shit. Alright, we're going to tactically retreat because my transient curse wore off. Okay, so that's uh, unfortunate. All right, let's see. Um, that's not where I want to go. I want to go this way into here. She will scream, ah, and more will show up. I'm going to crush her real quick. That's another transient curse. All right, now at this point we can climb up here. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. Fucking A. Okay. All right, screw those guys. 
This is the NPC that we wanted right here. And he's actually wearing the same uh, headgear that I am. So, And I think that's actually the pairing dagger in his left hand. Or jagged dagger, one of the two. Well, this is a surprise. I get few visitors, save for ghosts. You have the Lord Vessel. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek Is the key to the sea. Thank you. Kings number in the deepest chamber of the ruins. Use this key to break the seal and open the floodgates. Oh, and do not forget the dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the Abyss. But the Abyss is no place for ordinary mortals. Although, long ago, the Knight Artorius traversed the Abyss. If you can find him and learn from him, the Abyss may prove surmountable. Okay. Hello there. What is it? The key to the seal is now in your hands. I will help you in any way possible. Now, if you're cursed, he can uncurse you. Uh, pretty obvious. Let's talk to him. Londo was sacrificed to contain the dark wraiths. Mark my words. The dark wraiths are the enemies of man and any living thing that has a soul. They were never meant to roam again. You, Londo, okay. Mark and so we've run out of his conversation options. Uh... Like I said, he sells you transient curses uh, for a much cheaper price and the resist curse magic. Uh, I think... I don't think I'm going to get any. I've got 10 right now. And at this point, I would have to do something extremely stupid to waste all of those plus I have that jagged blade already so I'm not exactly in dire need now I am gonna drop down here because there is one more guy who oh shit don't tell me I can't oh don't tell me I can't drop down you gotta be kidding me well shit that's not what I wanted to do I'm gonna get popped maybe once or twice here Ooh, that was close All right, there we go. Let's uh, take care of this guy. Maybe. Okay, so now that we have the key to the seal, we can actually open up and drain the water out of here. And there's a guy right there. Okay. And thankfully, uh, the way the physics works in this game, you can actually swing through walls. That kind of helps you with some of these guys. Head this way. Oh shit. Okay. Grab that curse bite ring. Grab that transit curse. Get hit for no damn apparent reason. Okay. All right, and the curse bite ring is basically the same deal as the poison bite ring, except for the curse status. It will keep you from getting cursed, uh, increase your resistance to being cursed. Okay, let's see, where am I? Is that where I wanna go? 
I know there's gonna be enemies below here. Something, there's something. There's there's never an easy item in here. That tight night shark. Oh, maybe there is an easy item. Okay. So now we're gonna head this way. And we're gonna swing up this way. We saw an item up here uh, when we were talking to our NPC. Run through this way, grab that. Somewhere in here should be the switch that I want. Ah. Here we go. So we will push this lever. So basically, what did that do? That drained, as you can see, that's the Valley of the Drakes. It basically drained all the water into the Valley of the Drakes. Now, that may not necessarily be the easiest entrance because I count at least four dragons that you have to fight. Um, but it's there if you want it. And at this point, all of these levers should now work. We're going to head up here. Yeah. Ah, okay. There we go. And once we drop down this elevator, um, our trouble with the ghosts will be over. Um, at this point, we will face enemies called, um, you'll have Black Knight enemies, but they're a little bit different. I think they're actually the Dark Wraiths. Um, let's just drop down here. Now, uh, obviously one problem with this area, as you can see there's apparently millions of dead bodies here, but one problem with this area is it is extremely dark. So you want to move around with your shield up if at all possible, just so you can see enemies and you can actually hear this one guy coming towards me. That is kind of the good thing about this area. These enemies will come after you. They don't. Now, you don't want to get hit by that. Is that a shield attack? Yeah. That, you don't want to get hit. That's a grab attack. Does a fair healthy amount of damage. That is their quote-unquote shield. He has a kick attack. Basically the same uh, procedure for fighting all of the uh, knight enemies that you've already fought at this point. Dozens if not hundreds of times before. All right. There's one other enemy called a Mass of Souls. We will actually see him coming up in here. Sorry, I'm taking my time, but it, it is actually pretty difficult to see. I'm going to have to brighten this thing up uh, before I upload it. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Hmm, excuse me. Uh. <clears throat> There's a guy right there. Okay, got my large soul of a proud knight. Let's see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. Right, I'm pretty certain I didn't, but that hurt to check. Nah. No, no, no. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, now this will lead us back into uh, the church area where we picked up the parrying, parrying dagger and uh, I think there were a couple of transient curses. Um, you will find a mass of souls here and I think there's like two or three black or uh, of those night characters. God, I can't see shit. Uh, okay. I'm glad they make a lot of noise because I, I just literally cannot see shit in this area. And we have. Whoa, hello. Hey. As you can see, they have a ranged attack. Now what you have to watch out for is they can actually release smaller enemies that explode and they do that throw up kind of attack, which you don't want to get hit by. But the good news is you can kind of do what I'm doing back and forth if you got pyromancy. And Oh, that's, that's what I don't want. That right there will blow up. Yeah, once you get close to that, it goes boom. So just be careful. You'll actually face a different type of those in, a, in another area. Um, the first time you face that, it can do some fairly devastating damage. If you're not aware of what it's gonna do. Okay, there's a knight over here. And again, like most enemies, facing these guys one at a time, not terribly difficult. You see one of those skulls over there. Um, I think there's maybe one more black knight that I want to be careful. Let's see if I can pull him over here. Okay, uh, I want to try to find the stairs up to the next level as well. But let's, uh, let's not get blown up. Or let's try not to get blown up. Come on. Uh. Run away, run away. Now the bad part is you cannot lock on to them to do, uh, you know, to actually back away with their shield up. So it's kind of aggravating. Now there should be at least one black knight or dark wraith in these rooms. All right, right there. And we'll pull him out. Like I say, just don't get hit by that. Okay. 
Okay, now at this point I think we're fairly enemy free, so we can kind of tool around and see what, what this place has to offer as far as items. Uh, that humanity. Maybe I have to go up. Let's go up a level. I think I may have to go up to actually get to that. So we're going to go over here. And this is our, our lever. And it's obviously not going to move because the elevator's on the ground floor. So we're going to go over here to the spiral staircase. The soul item. And uh, I know I've pretty much uh, ran this entire level with my shield up, but I, I literally cannot see shit. I need to turn the brightness up, but already into it now so I'll just uh, brighten it up when I upload it oh, damn it all right so we go up here and try not to fall off there should be an item up here ah treasure chest uh, and that's a good one Ah, the very large ember. Uh, that goes to the uh, blacksmith at the Undead Parish. That allows you to upgrade, um, I guess, a regular upgrade of plus 15. Oh. Uh, it's floating on air a bit there, uh, but that's okay. Drop down here. Now, at this point. I think at this point we're going to actually head back to the entrance in order to fight uh, the boss of this level which is the four kings you have to have an item called the covenant of Artorias and that's basically what the NPC said when we first visited him uh, now the problem is I don't have that um, I have to get that by killing Sif, but I actually want to do some of the new content and actually save Sif because it will give me a slightly different cutscene. Am I moving slower? Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I will run through here and there's a bad guy. Okay, I will run through here and kind of do some item collecting. And then we'll uh, leave this area, come back a little bit later on. Okay, so that's a soul item. There should be an illusory wall right here. Okay, so, uh, oh shit. I 
I think that guy actually killed me the first time I come through here. I think he knocked me out into the uh, into the water. Oh, Titanite chunk. That's not a bad gift. So uh, let's uh, kind of slowly make our way out here. Or we're not. And uh, this is a good chest, so we'll. So we got two Titanite chunks in that encounter. Nothing here. Let's actually see if we can walk a little bit slower. Never mind. Screw it. Okay. Should be another soul item over there. Now, how do I get to it? Let's go up here. And we'll go over here. And there's some cracked red eye orbs. And another bad guy, which we all love. Don't kick me, you bastard. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to get that other item. I think you actually maybe go around here. Oh, I hear a mass of souls that I don't really want to deal with. Yeah, screw it. I'm not going to deal with that. Yeah, you know what? It's really not that important. Guess I can squeeze around here, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's not terribly difficult. Okay, so that is... Pretty much all of the items. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to head back to Firelink Shrine and call this a video. Whoa, 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 whoa. And the next time we come in this area, I will definitely uh, kick up the brightness a little bit because this is uh, this is ridiculous. Um, it's a little bit past moody. All right, so this is, should be very familiar. We're gonna hop out this way. And at this point, you can actually drop down. If you drop down to that platform, you can also you can drop down into that pool below. That's kind of where that ladder shortcut comes in handy. But you still would have to go through an area of three. You might as well just run off this edge and just be careful about the way you drop down. Let me check and see. All right, so we'll head back this way. And 
We'll exit out of the area by this bridge. And you can see this is actually a very extensive area. They just didn't use a whole lot of it. Actually kind of cool once the water drains out. Uh, now what's not cool is you can actually uh, fall off, which you could before, but it did. Seems a little bit more dramatic of a fall now. Okay, so we're going to run through here. Alright. Alright. Step on this pad. here and we're back safe and sound now let me show you the weapon I got when I get up here all right we now have a bunch of souls let's uh, unequip those but we now have this jagged ghost blade. And it actually tells you it's one of the cursed weapons. Now the good part is it will damage uh, ghost. The bad part is it's one of the special weapons. Uh, very much like uh, my straight sword that I was using for most of the first part of the game. Uh, so you have to have Twinkling Titanite in order to uh, upgrade it and it only upgrades to a plus five so it's not going to be the greatest weapon of all time uh, another weapon that we got was this parrying dagger right here which looks like uh, a sigh um, if you uh, do the light attack which is the uh, left bumper you get this attack right here uh, left trigger will actually parry which does this neat little number right in here and that actually opens up uh, it increases the parry window um, so if you're big into parry reposts uh, if you're in an area with a lot of knights like Anne Orlando that would have really helped out a lot you could parry repost most of their attacks um, okay so that's the first part of New Londo Ruins. So we've opened up all the shortcuts. Basically all we have to do is plow through a very small area in order to get to the Four Kings. And if we, if memory serves, I can actually get down to where that pool was just by jumping down. Um, that means we'll have to face maybe three or four black knights and one mass of souls. So it's not exactly an extensive group of enemies that we'll have to plow through. And then we'll be at the boss. Now there is a summon sign for Beatrice, who is the same NPC that helped us. Well, I won't say helped us, that, that actually killed the Moonlight Butterfly because I just kind of stood around. Um, but you don't want to actually summon her for that battle. Um, if you summon an NPC or another player character, it will actually increase the hit points of the boss. And in the Moonlight Butterfly fight, she's very useful because she can pretty much kill the boss on her own. But against the Four Kings, um, she's only going to hurt you. She, she, The hit points that get added to the boss are far worse than the help that she can uh, provide you. So, uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, the next time I record, we will probably get the item to unlock the Artorias of the Abyss content. We'll actually go to some of the areas that will be blind to me. So, um, I'll try not to make too much of a hash of those videos but it should be interesting. Really, the only thing I want to do 
is rescue Sif. That's really my only goal. Um, so, until next time, this is Cliff. I uh, hope everybody takes care. I'll see you soon.